So the topic I picked today is water quality modeling of anaerobic rivers. And I'm sure you all understand what anaerobic means. That is lack of oxygen. Or oxygen is very, 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 very low. Near zero. Or zero. By the way, let me check. Can everybody hear me well? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we can hear you very well. Thank you, sir. Okay. The reason I picked this topic is because, <clears throat> well, surely I'll give you a perspective. It's because this becoming stuck. <clears throat> almost like reviving the BOD and dissolved oxygen in rivers. This whole analysis. And let me tell you why. I will take you back to, say, half a century, going back to 1965. You see this picture? This is the Hudson River watershed. And this is the river coming down through Manhattan, New York City, going out to the Atlantic. The dark circle here indicates the treated wastewater, that is, wastewater treatment plant in those days. And then the others, like the shaded circles, are untreated wastewater. There were untreated wastewaters in those days. As a result, you can see the dissolved oxygen profile concentration profile in the summer of 1965. This 3200 is the river flow, fresh water flow. <clears throat> you have to understand this river coming down here, part of this become tidal, subject to tides from the ocean. And this flow rate, river flow rate, means fresh water flow. It's like the net water flow. And the temperature is around 19, between 19 and 24 degrees. As you move further downstream, coming down here, following my arrow, the, the water temperature tends to become higher and higher. Because in the upstream, the, the water temperature is cooler. But let's take a look at the, this is a longitudinal or spatial profile of dissolved oxygen level. 50, 40, 30 to 0. What's that mean? 0 is the mouth of the river. Somewhere here. The mouth of the, the river. 50 is 50 miles from the mouth. So that's upstream. Moving to the right is in the downstream direction. They, what we see here, first take a look at the data. I think it's <clears throat> that's most important. These data dissolve oxygen measurements in those days. We, you notice we have two sets of data. One is represent, represented by circle with the bar. The bar means maximum and minimum. The other set is represented by squares. Open squares also characterized by top bar and the lower bar. What the bar means, they are the range of the measurement during those days. You can see that dissolved oxygen dipping, dipping to very, very low. That's almost like, look at the scale, about 2 milligrams per liter, which is very low. What are these two curves? One solid curve, the other one is a uh, dash curve. They are the water quality models, predictions, or calculations. Why we have two sets of data and two curves, that is, the river is somewhat stratified in terms of oxygen. That is, the surface oxygen surface layer oxygen is are higher than the bottom layer, if you will. That is dividing the water column into two layers, top layers and the bottom layer. Bottom, always lower in this case, that is because less oxygen 
available from the atmosphere to replenish the oxygen consumption. The surface layer, of course, have a direct interaction interface with atmosphere. Therefore, get get the water get get the oxygen supply from the air. And this <clears throat> dash dot dash dot curve is dissolved oxygen saturation. You can see that slowly, progressively decreasing toward the downstream direction. Why is that? That's because a moment ago I mentioned to you temperature. Higher temperature in the lower estuary, in the lower part of the estuary, is you know temp dissolved oxygen saturation level. That means solubility of dissolved oxygen in water, which is temperature dependent. Higher temperature dissolve less oxygen in the water. That's why we have this curve, uh, this line, progressively slightly lower. Okay, that's the <clears throat> situation there. But the bottom line is, I'm telling you that dissolved oxygen is very low. It was very low 50 years ago in the Hudson. <clears throat> Take a look at another major estuary, also in the east coast of the United States. The Delaware River, 40 years ago, 1975. Very similar. Dissolve oxygen, that's 140 miles from the mouth. 140 miles from the mouth. And <clears throat> dissolve oxygen dipping. Now this is only showing the data. Why in that area we have dissolved oxygen dipped down to as low as one and a half milligram per liter? You have to <clears throat> take a look at some of these labeled here Philadelphia, Northeast, Philadelphia, Southeast, Philadelphia, Southwest. This river going through Philadelphia. This is Philadelphia here on this map. By the way, uh, everybody can follow my pointer here, right? You can see my pointer. Can you? Yes. Very good. That's why lots of domestic wastewater coming in from the Philadelphia metropolitan area drive the dissolved oxygen down. That's second example. Back in the 1975, with the fresh water flow, 7,570 CFS. We have relatively constant temperatures throughout 25 degrees, so I draw, <clears throat> uh, I did not draw the uh, oxygen solubility. However, 5 milligram per liter is the dissolved oxygen standard. You can see that a major, a good portion of the river. How long? About over 40, mi 40 miles with dissolve oxygen violating the standard. So that called for cleanup, correct? Call for cleanup. I can tell you that as, as late as say 1990 or shortly before 1990, the, these two rivers, the dissolved oxygen violation or such a low dissolved oxygen disappear following spending money to clean it up. <clears throat> now, this is probably the worst, couple of the two worst case I can think of in the United States. You notice that neither one really have the dissolved oxygen dip down to close to zero. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, let's take a look at the Third, third example, Mississippi River. Of course, Mississippi River is a very large river, much bigger than the Hudson, much bigger than the Delaware. But we're talking about the upper Mississippi. <clears throat> That's the upper portion, not anywhere near the lower Mississippi.
Mississippi, like the New Orleans, the mouth of the river. The upper Mississippi River, <clears throat> located in, in the state of Minnesota. <clears throat> this is the river going through, and we have a major tributary here, Minnesota River. Another major tributary, St. Croix River. <clears throat> the Twin City, Minneapolis and St. Paul, their population is served by this square here, Metro Plant. The, <clears throat> unlike the last two cases, this is much simpler. Example, there are only one major point source, wastewater treatment plant, discharged into the river. That's about here. Now, you can see these numbers, 840, 800, 820. These are the mild points, just like the last two pictures. Now, they are, if we count it from the mouth of the Mississippi, that's a much larger number. Instead, we count them from somewhere here, then here, that is when another major tributary, Ohio River, coming in. So, but in any case, these are just labels telling you the distance. So let's take a look at a 50-year historical review, historical view of the Upper Mississippi River, water quality conditions. Back in 1964, August 1964, very old data I can find, dissolved oxygen. Yes, the metro plan is here. Again, the longitudinal profile is running from left to right. So metro plan coming in, dissolved oxygen dipped to very low. This is the probably the worst one I have <clears throat> encountered. This this case even even worse than the last two examples. Now gradually rises up. That's 1964. When this wastewater treatment plant is was having primary treatment. Primary treatment, as you know, is pretty much defined as only physical process treatment. There's no biological process. Clean Water Act in United States started in late started in early 70s. Government spent money to upgrade the wastewater treatment plant. For example, in this case from primary treatment to secondary treatment, August 1976. Notice the flow here, 1,500 something, 2,100. These are relatively flow, low flow. Why are we looking at low flow? As you know, low flow, water moves slower. Give the opportunity for bacteria to act, to break down the organic carbon. In the process, they consume oxygen. That's why we always like to take a look at the water quality conditions at a critical period. That's low flow. And they also coincide in the summer season. Notice August 64, August 76, temperature are high. High temperature make the by microbial activity even stronger. So between low flow and high temperature, the system is under stress. So I'm showing you a stressed condition. Perhaps you can call it worst case condition. Okay, take a look at secondary treatment. Even with the upgrade, yes, we raise the dissolved oxygen. You see A40, A40 here, it's identical longitudinal labels. It raised, however, if we draw a horizontal line here of 5 mg per liter for dissolved oxygen, no, they are still violating. That's not good enough. So in late 70s, they, <clears throat> talk, they <clears throat> designed to upgrade the treatment facility from secondary treatment to advanced secondary. What is advanced secondary means in this case? That is providing nitrification. 
What is nitrification? That is nitrifying bacteria trying to break down ammonia, inorganic nitrogen. In the process, they consume oxygen. Therefore, we have bacteria in the river consuming oxygen. Now, basically, the advanced secondary is to move nitrification from the river downstream from the treatment plant, move that process to the wastewater treatment plant. You understand, right? So, therefore, in the process, ammonia is converted into nitrite and then eventually nitrate. As a result, you can see that the dissolved oxygen level, very nice. By 1988, very good. Still, in the summer, I chose the summer data to show you a very low, relatively low flow. The temperature, it's all, it, they all the same, 25 and 5 degree Celsius. How about <clears throat> now, recently? Well, recently we have data 2006. That's 10 years old. How come I don't, don't show you more recent data? Well, remember, I want to show you, show, the, show you the condition under low flow. This is low flow, but still, they, it is higher than the previous three low flow, but that's mother, mother nature I cannot help. So this is the lowest, lowest flow, perhaps, even the last decade. Yet, we have high, slightly higher temperature. See? Dissolve oxygen, no problem. If we draw a 5 milligram per liter standard, so that's not a problem. Okay. By the way, all this is documented in a paper I published in 1996 in the Environmental Journal of Environmental Engineering. So here we have, <clears throat> the picture here is low dissolved oxygen cell. Now, let's take a look at evolution of the dissolved oxygen and BOD. What drives dissolved oxygen low is BOD, between carbon and ammonia. Dissolved oxygen and indicator of water quality. Primary treatment of wastewater we went through. Secondary wastewater treatment. Now, biological oxygen demand BOD as a measure of organic waste load strengths. I'm sure you all been exposed to what BOD is, but what I'm going to point out to you in the next five minutes is we get into deeper, deep, have a much deeper look of what that is. First, let's take a look at the BOD myths. Some people say, that's how they ask, how did five day BOD start? Well, it takes five days for Mother Nature to finish the breakdown of organic waste and stabilize oxygen consumption once it enters the receiving stream. Another one, five days is long enough for biological matter in the sample to fully utilize the dissolved oxygen present in the sample. Next one, variable microbial population shifts to nitrifying bacteria limit test reproductivity for periods greater than five days. So that's why we got five days to be instead of six or ten days. None of these are true. They're all wrong. What is five-day BOD? Five-day is chosen by British in the 19th century to measure organic pollution of rivers. And this was the longest possible time for the pollutants to travel from source to sea in Great Britain. From where? London. River. Thames River. Right? Takes five days going into North Sea. Okay, five days, we don't worry about it because it's out of the country. Another point, different sources have different rates of oxygen consumption, and therefore 5-BOD cannot be compared among sources. Source 1, it may, may be very strong, and the BOD consumption, the oxygen consumption is very, very fast. Source 2 may be slow, so that's not a good indication. So, instead, we should use ultimate BOD to characterize this. What is BOD and why BOD? Now you probably have some good idea. BOD consumption by bacteria to break down these things, organic 
carbon, organic nitrogen, and ammonia. BOD articulating the link between organic matter in wastewater and dissolved oxygen in receiving water. <clears throat> BOD, CBOD with the C here is carbon, can be linked with algal biomass through organic carbon. BOD can be linked with sediment, we call it sediment oxygen demand. As a result, BOD is a surrogate. Is that a substance actually you can measure as BOD? No, BOD is a label, that's all. For example, you can measure chloride. You can express it by its atomic weight, yes, but not BOD. BOD is a surrogate. BOD is not a substance. So let's take a look at the dynamics, kinetics of BOD. In the laboratory from day 0, 5, 10, for example, BOD that label as the amount of oxygen. Now, instead of using oxygen level, we call it in a percentage. One is ultimate. You can see this kinetics curve. The kinetic, the K rate, is associated with this, you may call it model. This K1 actually is the K here. Higher value of that, steeper slope. That is the relationship between five-day BOD and ultimate BOD. As you can see, when the K becomes lower, it takes the five-day BOD, it's smaller percentage of the ultimate BOD. Why is that? Because this represents a more stabilized wastewater, which will take longer time to stabilize the carbon. Continue this direction, you eventually <coughs> moving into something like refractory. All the label organic carbon is gone. It's eaten up by bacteria. So that this ratio is be, is very important. Thanks for the British, they use five day BOD, but now we pay a price. A minute ago I said we cannot use BOD because in order to put everybody on the same level in playing uh, a very <clears throat> fair playing field, we must use ultimate BOD. However, all the wastewater permit, these things are all written in five-day BOD, even in the United States these days. Therefore, we need a translation. That translation required knowledge of K1, which is characterizing how fast, how slow, that is the kinetics of oxygen consumption. So, to give you an example, the ratio here, this ratio, it's about 2.84 based on a study uh, 1984 over 144 wastewater treatment plants. Okay. Now, I hope you can un start to appreciate the importance of this number, 2.84. But, <clears throat> if not, I will help you subsequently. Now, how do we measure this? That is long-term BOD to get ultimate BOD. For example, this one is a laboratory test. We measured BOD, that is total oxygen consumption. The same time we do independent measurement of nitrate, nitrite and nitrate. Why is that? Give you a quick history review. In the past, we like to differentiate between how much oxygen is spent by the bacteria breaking down carbon and how much oxygen required to break down organic nitrogen. So we put some chemical in there to suppress the nitrification bacteria. In the textbook, you will see that maybe by the end of eight days, the nitri nitrifying bacteria, to bacteria start to act. Well, that's not the, quite the case. Um, later, later we found that. Why? Because these chemicals are also oxidized by, <clears throat> are also are being oxidized in the process. So that really messed up the results. So these days, the standard method called for do not do put into the nitrification suppressor. Instead, measure the total BOD independently from the sample, measure 
the nitrite nitrate. What that tells you, in, how do you, let me show you how to read this curve, this uh, figure. Here, you can see that the nitrate, nitrate increase, yes, nitrification. In fact, nitrification contradicting to many textbooks. This is a real case, real uh, data that started actually before five days. So stoichiometry, you can convert this, you can figure how much oxygen is consumed by the nitrifying bacteria and then subtract it down here. That become our carbonaceous BOD, CBOD. So this area, this zone between these two curves is the oxygen consumption by nitrifying bacteria. And this area is the time series of oxygen consumption by bacteria trying to break down carbon, organic carbon. Okay? Now, quickly review a study we did in Taiwan, which <clears throat> perhaps in the interest time, I should move on. Let's skip this if we have time to um, come back. And this is the Taiwan study. <clears throat> now, give you an interesting comparison. A moment ago, we talked about the upper Mississippi River. You saw this picture and this picture a moment ago. That's from their wastewater treatment plant effluent in the 1988 data. This water is, this river is in Taiwan, the, 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 the study I just skipped in the interest of time. But that's river water in the 2010 data. You look at the oxygen consumption, that actually is BODP. Look at that. That's almost 60 total. This is 26. What does it tell you? It tells you that <clears throat> this is a vivid comparison. The water in the river in two, 2010, it's more, uh, uh, have higher BOD. The water quality condition is worse than the wastewater treatment plant water quality around the upper Mississippi River in 1988. Did you get this? I hope you, 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 you get the idea of this comparison. The river water is even worse than the wastewater. And they are almost over 20 years difference. And the river water is even later. Right? Now, you can see that, and that's because you can see here lots of the nitrate, nit here, lots of nitrification in the river. Another point, like the interesting point if, uh, to make here, this is oxygen consumed. Now you all know oxygen solubility is 12 <clears throat> at the best milligram per liter. How can we measure this in the, in the laboratory? 12 milligram per liter is gone. Now you can see that in the process, we must resupply oxygen in the long-term BOD test. That is this one. We have to resupply oxygen. Okay, sorry for the skipping, but I have to, <coughs> I have uh, probably, I put together too much material <laughs> to show you. Now let's talk about the anaerobic condition. How do we address this? <coughs> One big issue is the model reset the negative dissolved oxygen to zero, which violate the mass time conservation concept, leading to over reduction of BOD. Um, this problem never happened in U.S. As I explained earlier, we never encountered like totally the zero dissolved oxygen. However, somebody already pay attention to this published it article in Journal of Water Pollution Control Federation. By the way, this journal is the new name now as Water Environment. That is the journal name. Back in 1976, two people already did there from Chile to recognize this problem. However, they 
did not have a case study to show. Now, normally, if graduate student, you probably have come across this. Use a simple case to calculate the dissolved oxygen based on carbon, based on nitrogen. Now, you can see that this is the BOD decay along the river. This is oxygen. You can see the dip that sank here, okay, and recover. Okay, anaerobic dissolved oxygen is zero. So this comes down here, it's, it's zero. Now, normally, if you ask the computer to calculate it, of course, computer can calculate negative. But negative dissolved oxygen make no sense. But it is the negative dissolved oxygen causing the problem. Because if we arbitrarily reset the negative Z DO to zero, yet continue, the model is dumb. Continue to let the BOD to attenuate, to decay, as, uh, consuming the same oxygen at the same rate. Well, unfortunately, sorry. At this point, there's no oxygen in the water. The only oxygen they can rely on is from the atmosphere. So here it becomes zero. Now this DO curve would become not as a steep decay. Instead, taking a milder slope until <coughs> later on dissolved oxygen recover. Then we can go back to normal calculation based on this. That is the problem. Some people did not recognize. Another explanation, dissolved oxygen coming like this, this thin curve. Now, if it's a low BOD, no problem, it doesn't touch the zero. Everything is fine. Now, if this is very strong, in the, this curve, it's zero. The model, the dumb model, a dumb calculation will continue to drive this down, which is, which is wrong. That's why I said uncorrected for anoxia, anaerobic. So what we need to do is by this time, stop. This is a zero. If the zero, the BOD, this is the BOD, takes a smaller slope to decay because we have less oxygen supply until at this point, it recover. Then we go this. So this is called corrected for anoxia. That's for high BOD. Now we can calculate this distance, this X, between xi and xf, using this calculation. This calculation, this expression, indirectly derived from that paper. Uh, two investigators from Chile. So I'll give you a quick example. I don't have the time to go through this. We have a wastewater treatment comes in, river flow, <clears throat> going this, with all the attributes. Would the stream go anaerobic, that is dissolved oxygen become zero? If so, where? Now, then calculate the length of this. Give you a quick rundown. Yes, the stream would go in a row. Yes, I put this answer first, but the justification is right here. This is the equation in the previous slide from this. This is the equation, okay? So, I give you a good start. So, if you will, you can follow through. Okay. We have found that a stretch of, by the time it reached, 7.72, okay, dissolved oxygen is zero. We can calculate it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> okay, let's skip this. Now I want to turn the attention to Yamuna River in India. Our university, a year launched a study under our global initiative to study the Yamuna River. I have been leading, taking some students to study this river. Now. We, came, we got very good information online. One thing I compliment I, <clears throat> about this is Central Pollution Control Board, CBCP, in India, provided all these data. No, I don't even need, I didn't even have to ask. They're all available online. It's this transparent.
cleansing is great. This is the longitudinal profile of BOD and DO. Now BOD is low, DO is high. This is upstream. This is downstream. Yes, on the right hand side. Now, power. That's upstream from Delhi. You can see that at this bridge, BOD comes in. Dry, dissolved oxygen down. Yeah. This area is near Delhi for 25 kilometers. More data, additional data, 2011 and 2012, BOD. This is 2011, this is 2012, BOD, dissolved oxygen, dissolved This area, that's Delhi. This area is Delhi. Now, these are the <coughs> coliform bacteria, and they are very high number. We have recently talked to the public health agency during my visit last month in July about bacteria. Eventually we're going to deal with this. Our model, we will use models to calculate them. Now, what are we going to do? What's next? Should model be a deal in the non monsoon season? This is the non monsoon season. The non monsoon season May is the highest temperature. Now this is a very slow. So a moment ago I said we want to look at the system under stress. Yes, low flow, high temperature under stress. And from <clears throat> I uncover a big book, a sizable book <clears throat> compiled by a number of people, published 2012. See, this is the Nagaja. <clears throat> <clears throat> now you got a drain going downstream along the river here. Additional input, urban drain, domestic sewage. We all got these data. And also industrial wastewater all put in. Before we run any mathematical model, we did use a, a, a Excel sheet to check our calculation. About what? About to see if we can mimic this and without violating the mass conservation. And particularly the red line here for Delhi area. See, this location is in the Delhi area. Now we got some data. This is May 2015, very recent data. Thanks for our colleagues at CD, CPCD, Central Pollution Control Board. They provided a very recent data. In fact, these are not the annual average. Remember, I want to look at the low flow season. Therefore, I cannot look at the annual, you, I cannot use the a, annual average data. So this is the data, you can see the power, good dissolved oxygen. Now here, very, 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 very low. You can see that this is the area we're looking at. And eventually, we use the latest version of Quad 2K W model, which we have tested. It does have maintained the mass conservation when Dissolved oxygen becomes zero. So we're really putting Yamada, we're really putting all the attributes to run. And this is our latest results. BOD5, May 2015, yes, when this stream comes in, BOD rises compared with data. We definitely would like to have more data. Now, dissolved oxygen, yes, the drain comes in, drive it down to so very, very low. So this is our preliminary work. Incidentally, Dr. Sharma of Terry University, your institution, did her PhD thesis published in 2013, three years ago, came up with very similar results like this. And, and, and I wish I'd known that before I did this so that we could save some time. But Independently, we have come up with this. So, <clears throat> who is the big culprit? Not enough drink. You can see that 7,000 kilograms per day of BOD, five day BOD. None of these can match up. This, another one, this is only 2,000 something. So, next thing we want to do is include this drain in this is the river proper, Yamada River, the Delhi area, and this is the drain coming in. There are 37 tributary drains. 
Last month when I was in Delhi, I took the picture of these. That, you can see that, present our difficulty. How are we going to address this? This is an, one tributary drain going into the <clears throat> um, Najagav drain. This is the area, Najagav drain, going into the Yama River. So this is <clears throat> uh, my presentation. Um, unfortunately, I have to run a little faster in the letter half because I spent too much time going over the uh, basics. But the whole idea is we do have the tool, the necessary tool. All we need is sufficient water quality data to help us to help us do the analysis. And our work, our work on the Yama will continue. Like I said, we want to include this into the day. But the task, this is a daunting task. Why? One word, or three words. Data, data, data. Okay? Data is most critical. So let me stop here to take questions. See if you have any questions for me. And let's have a um, direct exchange. Thank you very much.